a little known upstart by the name of Yotta has been backed by none other than almost a two trillion dollar worth company Nvidia. Let's connect then with Sunil Gupta, the co-founder and managing director of Yotta Data Services to understand a little bit more. Thank you so much, Sunil, for taking time out. I bet you're beaming year to year, a little known data center startup, and now you're associated with uh, world-renowned NVIDIA, which is valued at close to $2 trillion. That must have been a pinch me moment, a dream moment. How did it even happen? So Yota is into the business now for five years. We started in 2019. We went operational with our data center and cloud services in uh, uh, 2020 when it was peak of COVID. And uh, we have been providing very large uh, co-location data center services and cloud services uh, since that time to a whole lot of enterprise customers. Uh, actually, my journey with NVIDIA had started uh, at right that, that moment when I was giving NVIDIA GPUs on an as-a-service cloud model to the Indian enterprises, startups, and uh, various other institutions. Uh, last year, we all know that, uh, you know, Chat GPT came into uh, our lives, and uh, first time, it was the end consumers who could feel the benefits of AI, and uh, that is the moment when the NVIDIA co-founder and CEO, Jensen Huang, also visited India. And possibly an overall narrative got built in India at that time that uh, for India to catapult into a peak position for AI, uh, India don't need to just need have skill sets, which India has. India also will have to build a very large superstructure of uh, GPUs because that is what uh, on which uh, AI runs. And uh, uh, I actually, uh, you know, was called by NVIDIA and they said that you seem to have everything what is needed to become our real front partner. Uh, you are running very large data centers. Uh, you have been giving GPUs on a, as a service model for last four years. You have the skill sets. Uh, so would you be interested? And uh, for us, it was, uh, yes, it was a dream come true. So I want to understand what makes Yota have a competitive edge over the other prominent tech players and conglomerates in the country. Is it largely because of your promise to offer the least expensive access to NVIDIA AI chips in the world? Uh, well, I think uh, there are many things. Uh, Yota is what we uh, call as concrete to cloud company. Uh, we, we are coming from data center background. So we have large parcels of land. We build, design, build, engineer our own data centers. Right now, my Mumbai data center campus can have more than 700 megawatt of power, which is the essential ingredient to host so much of IT. My Greater Noida Mumbai, uh, Delhi campus can have 200 megawatt of power. Again, these are very, very crucial elements for you to run, a, you know, infrastructure GPUs. Uh, on the top of these data centers, while we are hosting very large hyperscale cloud operators, enterprises, and many more customers, including governments, uh, I am able to, you know, uh, build this GPU infrastructure also on the top of that. So that is one part. Second is right from starting when we started Yota, we also built up the essential skill sets, the people element, you know, which is required to deliver end-to-end -end IT solutions to the enterprise customers. So if you see uh, on one hand, typically you will find, uh, you know, uh, service providers who will have infrastructure, but possibly they will only limit themselves to provide infrastructure for others to do IT. And on the other hand, you will find IT service providers or cloud service providers who focus on cloud or skill sets, but possibly they don't uh, own the infrastructure. In my case, we are building the concrete part, which is the underlying infrastructure part, the data centers part, but we also have the skill sets and the wherewithal to build our own India's own sovereign cloud. And now the GPU cloud called Shakti cloud. So this combination of infrastructure and skill set, and I would say, yes, our hunger and ambition to develop everything which the market needs uh, you know, five years down the line, uh, that is something which is differentiating us, uh, uh, you know, big time from 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 which others are trying to do. And I understand you're looking to massively scale up the GPU stable as well by the end of 2025. How much is this going to cost you? Given the size and scale of India, given the way our economy is growing, given the digital adoption India has, given the way uh, you know, India has got so much of tech population, which is, and given the, given our startup ecosystem, which is second to none in the world. And, and, and because of our uh, socio-economic uh, activities, the, the, and, and our rich culture with 300 plus languages, uh, the, the, the use cases of AI, the data sets, which is required to, to, to train models, 
you cannot have a better place than India. Uh, given that, there is no reason uh, to believe that India will not be as large a market as the US is, possibly surpassing uh, that market in times to come. So possibly it's initial times of 32,000 chips look big, which yes, we want to uh, do that by the end of the year to serve the market. But uh, I would say three years down the line, possibly when we are meeting uh, in a similar uh, talk, uh, we will be talking numbers which will be much, much bigger than 32,000. Uh, yes, this uh, say first 16,000 is going to cost us about uh, $1 billion. So yes, uh, if, if by the end of the year, if I go to 32,000 uh, chips, it will be about $2 billion of investment. Right. And uh, Sunil, give us a little more perspective on your fundraising plans as well. You're considering even letting Indian startups with tight budgets give you equity instead of cash? Yes, uh, we are, we are um, you know, well-funded. Uh, you know, there's a promoter uh, who has put in a lot of money. Uh, the banks uh, understand our plans. They understand our vision. So they are willing to fund us. Uh, yes, and we are looking out for sure. Uh, you know, all the options are available to us, both in domestic market as well as international market, and we are considering them carefully. Uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, our customers are concerned, yes, I can clearly see that uh, uh, right now it is, a, uh, it is a capability building phase for India. There are a whole lot of startups who, who know what they want to do, who have got all the wherewithal in terms of skill sets to, to, to build large foundational models, which India needs. But uh, what, uh, what as of now they are lacking because it's experimental phase. So uh, having a, a unlimited type of funding, which typically is required in case you want to buy your own setup for AI, this, this huge number of GPU boxes possibly is not something which, uh, which, uh, uh, anybody or everybody will be able to, to, to mop up. So that is where, uh, uh, number one, I have uh, launched uh, Shakti Cloud uh, at a price point which we have benchmarked as the best in the world. I can claim with a lot of certainty that uh, we have launched Shakti Cloud, which is completely based on NVIDIA's reference architecture, uh, you know, uh, uh, with all the right uh, technical specifications. Uh, compared to best in the world. And even while doing that, uh, our Shakti Cloud will be available at a price point, which is uh, best in the world. No service provider, even in mature markets like US, is giving uh, GPU Cloud at a price point on which we have priced it out, just because we want that, uh, we want to grow this market. Unless and until the GPUs are available to Indian startups, Indian enterprises, Indian government institutions, Indian educational institutions, you know, everybody who is serious about building AI models, unless they have got very easy access, uh, they will not be able to build up this model. And that is not how uh, India can grow in the AI market. Now, you've been working for decades on the data center business. You co-founded the company back in 2019 with the backing of the real estate billionaire Niranjan Hiranandani. What is the annual run rate of revenues that you're operating at? What are your profit metrics? Can you share with us some details? Uh, uh, I mean, actually, I can only say that, uh, you know, uh, our market valuations are uh, going crazy. Uh, given that uh, we are representing, you know, multiple capabilities uh, under one roof, uh, the core infrastructure which is required to run these GPUs and thousands of GPUs is something which I own, the data centers. These are absolutely modern, great, uh, world-class uh, data centers. Uh, we build them with a the perspective that tomorrow India needs as much IT, including GPUs, I should be able to run it. Uh, we own the skill sets. We own our own software orchestration layer, which is required through which the users will be accessing the GPUs and building their AI models and then putting it later for inferencing purposes. So this capability of concrete to cloud is something which is very, very difficult to match. And that is something which uh, uh, which essentially is, uh, you know, leading to very high valuation for uh, for people are looking at us very, very optimistically in terms of what type of future we can build, uh, which is essentially built on the opportunity which India offers as a AI marketplace. Uh, we are getting, uh, you can say possibly I am on a CAGR uh, basis, I'm growing almost like 300% every year. Uh, AI is just going to add possibly, it's going to at least ensure that uh, I, even, even when the base keeps on increasing, 
uh, we will be at least growing 100% every year for the next couple of years. So you're offering companies the likes of Wells Fargo and company access to data storage and computing. Who are some of your other prominent clients? Um, I may not be able to give you the names of the client because of the strong NDAs are in place. But all I can say is that uh, we have got hyperscale cloud operators as our customers because I also give them large co-location facilities. I build data centers as per their specifications. Uh, I have got uh, multinational banks, uh, you know, who either for their India operations or for their global capability centers are are hosting with us, and I'm delivering them uh, not only co-location but a whole lot of managed services. Uh, I have got some of the very, very bright unicorn type of uh, tech companies who are running uh, critical SaaS services, which in turn they are serving to enterprise customers and governments. Uh, we have got government bodies, uh, you know, uh, with whom we have got some very, very strong tie-ups. Um, uh, you know, we are building actually cloud capabilities for some of the very large government organizations. Uh, we have got uh, enterprises practically from all industries, whether it is manufacturing or auto or pharma or, uh, you know, uh, uh, BFSI, uh, uh, a whole lot of financial sector companies. And then finally, we have lots of startups, right, who are consuming my cloud, whether it's a CPU-based cloud or whether now it's a GPU-based cloud. And as I said that, I was, uh, I actually started giving GPU services uh, uh, ever since we started Yota four years back. Uh, that time it was uh, smaller GPUs, more for creation of content, for the VFX effects creation, for creation of games, for playing games, you know, for, for those type of use cases. Of course, now when I'm getting into the, the bigger GPUs with InfiniBands and all, these GPUs will be now will be the, become the foundation for the, the AI models. But essentially, essentially, because any and every uh, business requires IT, and what I'm delivering is IT on an as-a-service model. So, so, so we have got a variety of customers from all spectrums of business and government. And you've gone on record to say that you're ambitious, you're hungry. So what is the road ahead for you and for Yota? See, essentially, I am betting, uh, you know, my dreams on India's growth. Uh, and as I said that uh, if we just try to connect multiple tailwinds, which are driving India, whether it is a extremely favorable government policies, which are leading to the growth of uh, digital India, uh, whether it is make in India, which is leading to a whole lot of tech manufacturing now in India, whether it is our large population, which has practically become a boon for India, uh, which has which is upwardly mobile, which is aspirational, which has got disposable income, which does not fight shy of, you know, using the credit cards or making online payments, whether it is uh, India stack, which has enabled every single person in India to start paying online, uh, you know, uh, whether it's our English speaking population, which, which, which actually is very tech savvy. So it is not only creating technology, including AI models for India, but also is becoming the garage for the world for creating models for the world. You know, all these dots when we connect, you know, coupled with a clear projection from everybody that Indian economy will keep on going by 7% or more in the times to come. It by default means that if we are creating the right technology, this GPU cloud which on which the AI is going to run, uh, any and every uh, estimate of growth, you know, may go wrong. I think we will be growing very, very big because India will be growing with the same speed. And we feel that we will become a very strong foundation for that growth. Okay, Sunil, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for joining in. All right, on that note, then we'll wind it down on this edition of Startup Central. Thanks so much for watching.